Hello, welcome back to the shop. I'm Mark at Mark's Upholstery. Today, I'm gonna to make a pillow for this chair back here. See, I've already done some pillows for the sofa that goes with this chair, but on this chair, I'm gonna need to make a kidney pillow that's gonna uh, fit probably up into here. I want it to be about uh, 12 inches tall. I don't want it to be one of them little dinky ones down here, but I want it to get more up in this area here and, and more support for the back. Okay, I've determined that I want this pillow to be about 21 inches wide, which is not quite the full width. Uh, maybe about a half inch short on each side, and then sometimes you can do one inch on each side. You don't want it to look too skimpy, but you don't want it to look like it oversized the back of that uh, back cushion. So what I've come up with is 21, and then I want it 12 inches tall to be a more substantial back for more support. This is gonna be a knife-edged kidney pillow, so I like to cut my pillows two inches bigger by each measurement. So I'm gonna cut it 23 by 14. Whenever possible, you wanna use a straight line in your fabric to cut by. I'm cutting one and a half inch strips on the bias for welting. I'm marking the ends because I don't want these two ends to be sewn together. I'm using a lightweight ticking for my tick, and you can use any lightweight fabric. Just make sure it doesn't show through your cover. I'm cutting about one inch around the edge of my fabric. I'm leaving a hole about 10 inches on the bottom.
I'm overlapping the fabric by an inch. This will allow for a half inch seam on both sides. I'm going to pretend that this pillow is a stripe and show you how it would put together as a stripe. What that means is I'm going to take my two tops and put them together and I'm going to line them up corner to corner on this one. Uh, but if this was a stripe on this side and a stripe on the other side of the same fabric, I'd be lining these stripes up in the middle and then I would sew around one side to about over here and then I would turn this over and you'll see me do this and come back and sew around over to here and leave my 10 inch opening. It's best to fluff out your fiber before you put it in your tick so you'll end up with less lumps. Okay, I've got this pillow where it's filled to where it's almost full. You don't want to overpack these because you have to remember this is a bigger tick going inside of a smaller cover. And if you were to fill this up as if it were like a regular pillow, then it's going to tighten up going into the cover. So, and you can play with this. Um, the thing about it is, is that, you know, once you close it up, you can stick it in your cover and kind of hand grab to what would be closed and see if you like the feel of that. You know, you don't want to underfill because it won't have support, but you don't want to overpack to where it's just, I've seen a lot of them that were just way too hard, not comfortable and, and didn't really look good that way. So uh, learning to how much fill to put in is just something you'll learn on your own. But the key is to think of it as being just a little bit underfilled. As far as closing these up, uh, if you have the sewing machine, surely you do because you're sewing the, the uh, cover, you can just stitch these closed. Uh, another option is to just whip stitch it closed with a needle and thread.
right, now that you've got your pillow filled, uh, I'm gonna show you how you close this up. Next, you're gonna wanna get some hand stitching thread. You don't want that lightweight stuff that you do to, to sew up little uh, dresses or anything like that. Um, you need a good sturdy hand stitching thread, preferably in a color that's pretty close to what you're sewing on. But the rule of thumb is, is that as long as you don't see it, it really doesn't matter what color it is. It's best to minimize your stitches to about a quarter of an inch and try to make sure they're straight up and down with each other. 